In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, welcome to St. Anne's. For those who are normally here at the St. Anne's 8 a.m. Mass, so we have a few extra guests today. Uh, we are hosting the North Texas Men's Conference, and so it is a beautiful experience to have so many men here present. Uh, would that our churches were full this way every day. Uh, and that is to be a prayer of our heart as we gather together as men to be strengthened. For those who are joining us via live stream that aren't able to join us physically, I want us all to know that in the Lord there is no space, there is no time. So whether or not you're watching this three days from now or 30, or you are three miles away or 30 or 300, we are all gathered together um, in the Lord. And as we always do, we recognize that we are sinners, that we have fallen short, and we uh, have a Lord that even with all of that loves us. And so, let us boast of our weaknesses, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves, our brothers and sisters, to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the font of baptism have made new those who believe, keep safe those who are born in Christ, that defeating every onslaught of error, they may faithfully preserve the grace of your blessing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the numbers of the disciples continue to grow, the Hellenists continue to complain against the Jews because their widows were being neglected in the name of the church. So the twelve called together the community of disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect that the word of God is served our table. Brothers, select from among you seven beautiful men, filled with the spirit of wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Hermenus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples of Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Sponsorial song. Lord, lay your mercy upon us as we place our trust in you. Lord, lay your mercy upon us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise for the upright and disfigured. Give thanks to the Lord on the heart. With the ten string of the earth, we chant his praises. Lord, Lord.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Father Edwin Leonard. I'm the pastor here at St. Anne's Catholic Church. And again, it is an honor uh, to be able to be with all of you to stand in front of our normal parishioners, but also uh, a group of men from across the diocese, from not just Dallas, but from Fort Worth, from other places across the world, for people who are gathering with us uh, via live stream. It is an honor. Um, our Gospel reading, I think, today speaks so powerfully to our hearts. It frustrates me when people say things like, I don't read the scriptures because the scriptures don't mean anything to me. Um, I hear that often. I can't, I can't find an entry point where it speaks to my life. And I'm just like, are we reading the same book? Are we reading the same book? Like when today the gospel was proclaimed, as someone who's been following the Lord um, in, in a serious way since I was 16, um, in this very church campus I came to know the Lord, um, sometimes I've been walking with the Lord for a long time, and in the current kind of epoch of our time, um, as our culture and our world turns uh, from a Christian society more to a post-Christian society um, where people kind of know who Jesus is um, but don't really have any real understanding of what he has to offer. Um, as I find myself walking in this place, I feel for the disciples. They were in this boat uh, and a boat that they would have been going across uh, the sea with would have been from about here to about here. Now imagine that, and it would have been about this wide, and there would have been 11 guys in it, 12 guys in it, in a boat that small, 
And they're like, let's get on it. Let's do it. This is awesome. I'm on board with you, Jesus. I will go where you want me to go. But then it happens that it starts to get a little bit darker. And they're rowing. And the wind and the waves start to happen. And they're still rowing. And it's getting darker. They can't see. They're getting tired. It's not the first hour anymore. It's the second hour. It's not the third hour. It's the fourth. And now all of a sudden, they're exhausted. And all they want is Jesus to be in the boat with them. I don't know if you have any experiences like that, analogously to your life. Perhaps it's like you've been rowing for a long time and Jesus isn't there. And you feel like you are at the end. The gospel today um, is an encouragement that the Lord is there. He will meet you. Don't stop rowing. He will bring you to the shore. Keep going. He is our strength. The Lord does not need you, but he chooses you. The world is in desperate need of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Desperate need of Jesus Christ. Um, we believe oftentimes falsely that we, the world is like just set on neutral. And if it chooses bad, it, it'll go, you know, downwards to eternal death and chaos. And if it chooses good, that it'll go to heaven. And we tend to believe that most people go to heaven. Um, but that is not what the scriptures say. Just this week in our daily Mass readings, as we encounter the Lord, we've been walking through uh, John chapter 3. Uh, do you guys know the most famous verse in the entire world from John chapter 3, where they hold it up in end zones? Uh, say it with me, John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that all who believe in him may not perish, but have eternal life. And then it continues, and it says in verse 17, which people don't know, Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but that all who believe in him may be saved. He didn't come to condemn the world um, because the world is already condemned because of its sinfulness. John 3.16 is a divine rescue mission, my brothers and sisters. Um, it is testifying that God had to send his son into the world. The world needed him, or it was fitting that he sent his son into the world to live a life like ours in all ways but sin. Because the world didn't need to be condemned because it was already condemned because of sin. St. Paul says this in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, right? It's not neutrality. We were already dead in our transgressions, but we live in Jesus Christ. The world needs Jesus, and God sent his son into the world so that the world may believe, but the world is not believing currently. And so Jesus Christ sends his body the church. He ascends to the right hand of the Father and promises that he would send an advocate and a guide, a powerful spirit, to enliven his church, which is his body, the body of Christ, to go out into the world. In John 14, it says, if you believe in Jesus, Jesus says this, this is Jesus' own words, if you believe in me, you will do the works that I do. Who believes in Jesus? Amen. Amen. Are you doing the works of Jesus? A much smaller response right there. Right? Do you believe in Jesus? Amen! Yes! Are you doing his works? Yes? Sometimes? But then John 14 doesn't stop there. It says, if you believe in me, you will do the works that I do, and even greater works than these. That's the call. The Lord doesn't need you, but he chooses you. 
in his plan, in his mission. He empowers you by the grace of your baptism to be his warriors in this battle. The best way to view this is by our sin. We sold our birthright of paradise. We are behind enemy lines and we are fighting. And we were losing. We were dead in our transgressions. And God sends his son behind enemy lines to stick out his hand and says, follow me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I will lead you. Take up your cross, deny yourselves, and follow after me. Matthew 16 says. And then he founds this church. And this church is his body and he sends his spirit to enliven and empower them. You, individually, each one of us is meant to be a Christ, sent out into the world to teach and to preach with the power and the authority of the Spirit. If the world is in darkness, it is because we are hiding our light. The world needs you because the Lord has entrusted to you his mission. The trajectory of the world is not neutral. It is towards sin and death and darkness for eternity. And the Lord has come that they may have life, and then he has sent us. And you might say to yourself, Jesus, I am not good enough to be able to do this. And if that is how you feel, if you were on the third and the fourth hour and you feel too weak to keep going, I say, good. Because the world does not need you, it needs him. And he has chosen that he will live and work and move through you. In your weakness, in your third and fourth hour of tiredness, when we see that we need Jesus to bring us to the shore, that is exactly the place that the Lord works powerfully. Do not stop. Trust and hope and faith in the rest of this day is about receiving and learning and being able to move in that space. And so I want you to open up your hearts. Whatever the difficulty of your life is that you are going through right now, maybe it's marriage, maybe it's work, maybe you feel alone in your faith, maybe you are just now beginning your walk with Jesus, maybe you have been managing a particular sin for your entire life, maybe you've been carrying the cross of a sin and you're not quite ready to let it go yet, but the Lord's calling for it, and you've been walking with him for too long to keep holding on to this sin, and now maybe today is the day where we say, I am weak, Lord, but I want your strength to live in and through me. I want us, as we bring forward bread and wine, we place it upon that altar. That is what I want us to bring. Because the Lord says, through St. Paul in Romans 12, I urge you, therefore, my brothers, to offer yourselves as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is good and pleasing and perfect. And so at every single Mass, when we have that procession of the gifts forward, as men, you should be offering the Lord your very life. I hate it when people say, when they'll, they'll talk to men, like I hear wives say this all the time, They'll say, Mass is just one hour a week. No, it is not. Do not sell it short. Mass is not one hour a week. You're here, if you're from St. Anne's, you're here for about an hour and seven minutes. Um, <laughs> but it is not just an hour and seven minutes a day. Your entire life, all of your failures, all of your weaknesses, all of your strengths, all the beautiful things that you do to the praise and glory of God's name, all of those come together in one offering that we place on the altar. It is your entire week brought to the culmination of this moment of giving thanks. It is not one week. It is the trusting in the third and the fourth hour of rowing and working with the wind and the rain that God will be there and he will bring us to the shore. And at this moment, we arrive. And so today, we bring forward bread and wine. We offer up our weaknesses, our strengths, every part of ourselves as a living sacrifice. And we watch how God sends a spirit. 
to enliven us and strengthen us. Because the world doesn't need you, it needs him. But he chooses you to be him out in the world, to make him present, to share your light in the darkness. And when it's his light, the darkness cannot, will not, and will not, but won't overcome it. So brothers, let's trust in the Lord. Let's take a moment of silence to form in our heart our offering. Let's trust him. And let's continue to row.
May brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all the soul of the church. Sanctify graciously these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with passion joy over the hand of every people, exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they claim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, In a similar way, when supper was in him, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, 
Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, with St. Paul, Thomas Aquinas, Francis, Dominic, Ignatius, with St. Anne, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church honor. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Edward our Bishop, Gregory is assisting Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
invite you in this moment of silence. Just ask the Lord for something. St. Teresa of Avila says that we pay the Lord a compliment when we ask for great things. And so whatever you need, whether that's for uh, strength to battle against the temptation of sin, whether or not that's for someone in your family, whether your spirit of influence that needs help, whether or not that's for a gift and a charism that the Lord might be calling a place in your heart to share with your church. Just a zeal to share your faith. Just ask the Lord. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mission, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity. Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers who are here attending the conference, you will remain seated as we uh, conclude our uh, recessional hymn and song. Uh, for everybody else who is just here, stumbled into a normal 8 a.m. daily mass, uh, we love having you, uh, but our conference is going to start immediately after that. So if you could uh, reverently pray, uh, our chapel is available, and if you would like to uh, conclude in your prayer there, we also have um, but our men's conference will remain here and we will start our conference um, shortly. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the 
Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Amen.